Japan's nuclear crisis started on March 11, 2011. An earthquake and tsunami disabled the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Seismologists are trying to figure when the next disaster will hit. They say a powerful quake could strike off a peninsula east of Tokyo. The epicenter is different from the one that triggered the Great Kanto earthquake in 1923. Members of the Geospatial Information Authority of Japan presented their analysis Wednesday at a meeting of the Coordinating Committee for Earthquake quake prediction. GPS data shows the tip of the Boso Peninsula has been moving about three centimeters northward each year since 1997. Analysts say seismic pressure may be building up in the area where an oceanic tectonic plate slides under a continental plate. The area off the Boso Peninsula has not had a major earthquake for at least 300 years. An earthquake in this zone could have a magnitude as high as 8. We'll conduct new surveys and recalculate our assessments. Geospatial Information Authority researchers plan to calculate the magnitudes and frequencies of expected earthquakes in these areas. People across Japan are feeling the heat. They're worried about a power crunch as they head into summer. All nuclear plants in the country are offline. Government leaders say they hope to announce the restart of one in western Japan as early as next week. But first, they need to win the approval of the municipalities around it. Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda met with his cabinet ministers in charge of nuclear issues. Chief Cabinet Secretary Osamu Fujimura, Economy and Industry Minister Yukio Edano, and Nuclear Crisis Minister Goshi Hosono. They agreed the leaders of most municipalities near the OE plant support the restart, though with reservations. Leaders of Fukui Prefecture and OE Town, where the plant is located, are still undecided. In the end, I'll take personal responsibility in making the decision. If the host municipalities agree to it. The government leaders say they'll send a senior official to the area to reassure residents. They say a powerful quake could strike off a peninsula east of Tokyo. And they'll station a senior representative there in the long run. They've also proposed a teleconference link built among the plant, its operator, and the prime minister's office. Cabinet ministers will await approval from local leaders. If they get it, they'll meet again next week to make their final decision. Researchers in the U.S. say they believe migratory fish carry radioactive substances across the Pacific Ocean. They found a trace amount of cesium in tuna caught off the coast of California five months after the accident. Five months after the accident. Researchers from Stanford University and elsewhere tested 15 bluefin tuna they caught last August off San Diego. They found the fish contained elevated levels of cesium-134. They say their substance is generated only by human activities and was not present in the Pacific before the accident. The researchers say their findings suggest that tuna were most likely contaminated in Japanese waters after the accident. They say the fish then traveled nearly 9,000 kilometers across the Pacific. Still, the researchers say the tuna are still safe to eat. Japanese scientists say radiation from the March 11th disaster took just 40 days to spread around the world. Researchers from Fukushima University measured the concentration of airborne radioactive substances near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. They took daily readings starting about two months after the disaster. They say the measurements rose and fell in 40-day cycles. The overall density had declined by around 85 percent by March this year. Professor Akira Watanabe directed the research. The research will enable us to measure what influence the radioactive materials from Fukushima has on the planet. Watanabe says the results of the study can be applied to any other country or region. 
Well, for post-Fukushima consumers that are worried about radiation, a personal Geiger counter could soon be as close as your cell phone. Major Japanese phone carrier SoftBank is releasing a smartphone this summer that has a built-in radiation counter. SoftBank made the announcement on Tuesday at a launch event for new products. The firm says a simple touch of the screen can let users measure the radiation around them in just about two minutes. Users will be able to save the readings along with location, and they can also uh, refer to past history. The release of the new phone comes amid growing health awareness, particularly among mothers that have small children. For example, a mother can measure radiation between her home and the child's school and save the data on the phone's map. Son says he wants to reduce monthly charges for handsets. Industry observers say SoftBank's latest move will further intensify competition among carriers to boost smartphone sales. SoftBank, another phone carrier, has developed a way to quickly restore telecommunications using a balloon with an antenna attached. SoftBank tested the balloon uh, about 100 meters above the ground. The balloon will serve as a temporary base station during a power outage. In the test, signals sent from a radio relay vehicle were transmitted to a mobile phone via the floating base station. Phone calls and texting were all tested. SoftBank says the balloon base will allow about 1,000 users within a 5-kilometer radius to use their phones at the same time immediately after a natural disaster. The firm says the balloon base can function almost as well as a conventional base station on the ground. SoftBank is planning to produce more of these antenna balloons and is also considering sharing the technology with other telecom firms. Japanese authorities expanding their investigation into what a Chinese diplomat was doing in Japan. The agriculture minister says a ministry of staff will look into reports the former member of China's intelligence services may have been involved in an expo export project. They'll check for intelligence leaks. Police wanted to speak with the diplomat. They suspect he obtained a registration card for foreigners illegally. He rejected their request for an interview and left Japan last week. Agriculture Minister Michiko Kano says he may have met the diplomat somewhere, but he says he can't remember in what capacity they met. Kano said he would appoint a panel to investigate the diplomat's involvement with the ministry project to export produce. U.S. researchers say new satellite images show Iranian authorities are doing more to clean up evidence of their nuclear weapons development program. The Institute for Science and International Security released photos suggesting the country is going out of its way to prepare for international inspections. The Institute pub published images of a military facility near Tehran where the suspected weapons development took place. A satellite took the pictures last Friday. Researchers compare the latest images with those taken in early April. They say two buildings have been demolished. They argue that's where Iranian scientists carried out experiments involving powerful explosives used in nuclear weapons. The researchers also say the satellite photos show evidence of earth displacement and the movement of heavy machinery. The release of the photos follows a meeting last week in Vienna by the International Atomic Energy Agency. IAEA authorities said Iranian workers have been scraping away soil in a bid to clean up the site.